Pitt football went 3-9 and nine last year, and some felt that may become the norm in the revamped ACC rather than a one-off. It was their worst season since they went 2-9 and nine in 1998, a year before I was even born, and it was their second time missing a bowl game under Pat and Narduzzi as well. Heading into the season, some felt Narduzzi was on the hot seat after winning the ACC in the 2021 season and going 9-4 in 2022, but the depressing 2023 season changed a lot of viewpoints. Pitt watched as defensive starters entered the transfer portal. Fans were just hoping to win six games this year. What has occurred instead has truly been amazing as Pitt is sitting at 7-0 and currently controls their own destiny with a major matchup with SMU this weekend. This is how Pitt has put together a magical season. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, let me know who you think is the best undefeated team in the comment section below. Back in 2021, led by Heisman finalist quarterback Kenny Pickett, Blitnikoff wide receiver Jordan Addison, offense coordinator Mark Whipple, and wide receivers coach Brendan Marion, along with a defense that allowed less than 88.7 rushing yards per game, the Panthers would put together a magical season that saw them win the ACC championship, their first outright conference title in school history, and they played in the Peach Bowl. Following a season, Whipple left to become the Nebraska offense coordinator, Marion left to become Texas's wide receivers coach, Addison transferred to USC, and Pickett entered the NFL draft. Narduzzi replaced Whipple with Frank Signetti Jr. and Marion with Taekwon Underwood. They brought in Keaton Slovis via the transfer portal but saw a drop off of over 100 passing yards per game and 10 less points per game as Slovis threw for 2,397 yards, 10 touchdowns and 9 interceptions. Many thought Pitt, including myself, would compete for the ACC championship, but instead they played down to their many inferior teams. They started the season with a win over West Virginia 38-31 and fell to Tennessee in overtime 34-27, followed by wins over Western Michigan and Rhode Island where they got down to their third-string quarterback Nate Yarnell. Losses to Georgia Tech, North Carolina, and Syracuse led the Panthers to finish the regular season 8-4, for a bowl win over UCLA in the Sun Bowl led to them finishing on a five-game win streak and 9-4 and overall. The defense played well, and the offense had a strong run game, averaging 183 yards per game. Fans hoped Pitt would bounce back. Heading into the 2023 season, both the offense and defense were nearly completely different. Slovis transferred to BYU, and to replace him, Pitt brought in Phil Dracovic from Boston College, who had been plagued by injuries throughout his career. They did look to have a strong wide receiving core heading into the season and looked to have a running back by committee in the backfield. They lost a ton of their star talent from 2022 heading into the 2023 season and hoped guys could step up to replace them. They played an unforgiving schedule though, going against a Drake May-led North Carolina team, Jordan Travis-led Florida State team, Sam Hartman-led Notre Dame team, Syracuse, Duke, Louisville, and West Virginia. They were expected to win 78 games though, but instead, this season would be a disaster. Two four-game losing streaks and a season finale loss to Duke led to a shocking 3-9 record. Many felt this team did not lack talent, but instead was poorly coached. While Signetti's offensive system did not work out very well, his town evaluation may have been even worse. Fans questioned why Nate Yarnell was the third-string quarterback entering the season after the way he looked when he took over the starting role and impressed late in the season. Mike Vukovokin from Pittsburgh Sports Now wrote back in November of 2023, The million dollar question remains, why did it take two other quarterbacks underperforming to get Yarnell a shot? That's a black eye on Signetti, and one of the many reasons Pitt should be looking for a new offense coordinator. Want some more examples of misevaluation and misusage? How about running back Rodney Hammond Jr. being inexplicably ignored all season? Gavin Bartholomew and Carter Johnson were ignored all season long too and proved throughout the season they would be effective when used. This misevaluation and lack of development aren't exclusively just offensive skill position players. How about the regression of some of the veteran players on the offensive line? If Narduzzi wanted to get things back on track, then he was going to need to make some changes to his staff rather than remain loyal to guys who weren't performing as coaches. Due to the horrendous quarterback play and issues on offense, Narduzzi would choose to fire Signetti Jr., offensive line coach Dave Orbelli, tight ends coach Tim Salem, and running back and special teams coach Andre Powell. Underwood also left to become the assistant wide receivers coach for the New England Patriots. Narduzzi replaced Signetti with offense coordinator Cade Bell from Western Carolina of the SCS. Bell brought with him Jeremy Darvaux for the offensive line and J.J. Lasseter for wide receivers. 
Jacob brought a whiskey, left Miami, Ohio to take over tight ends and special teams responsibility, and Lindsey Lamar departed Howard to coach the running backs. Along with the coaching changes, Pitt brought in former four-star quarterback Eli Holstein from Alabama and Desmond Reed from Western Carolina, among other key transfer players. There were concerns when it came to the offensive line heading into the season, as they also lost three of their best players on defense to the transfer portal. On defense, they added Nate Matlack from Kansas State and Jeremiah Anglin Jr. from Kentucky. FanDuel projected them to win 5.5 games, while PFF projected them to win 6.8 games heading into the year. Bell brought in an up-tempo offense that has led to Pitt scoring a lot of points this season, basically on par with what they did back in 2021 when they averaged 41 points per game, which was the third most in college football. Bell and Arduzzi have worked well together, both solving problems from different angles and balancing each other out. While Arduzzi is known as more of a defensive coach, he cares about scoring points. Pitt had to rethink its strength and conditioning to accommodate Bell's up-tempo offense. They run a lot more now. Heading into the season, Pitt was 0-35 when trailing by more than 10 points, heading into the fourth quarter under Narduzzi. That has changed this season. While Pitt started the season off with a 55-24 win over Kent State in Week 2 against Cincinnati, they found themselves down 27-13 heading into the fourth quarter and were down by 21 points at one point. Narduzzi paced the sideline angered by his team's early struggles and acted like a caged animal. Bell, on the other hand, was calm, shocking Narduzzi. The calmness paid off as Pitt would come back to win 28-27. With five minutes left in the backyard brawl, West Virginia would take a 34-24 lead. Pitt would storm back to win 38-34, scoring two touchdowns in the final 306. Week 4 saw them destroy Youngstown State 73-17 for beating North Carolina and Cal 34-24 and 17-15 respectively to start the season off 6-0. Their best start since 1982. While Yarnell would win the starting quarterback job at first, Holstein never stopped putting in the work. The redshirt freshman ran Alabama scout team last year and met with Ha Ha Clinton Dix early in the morning to understand Nick Saban's coverage scheme better. He took that same habit to Pitt, meeting with Narduzzi at 6.30 in the morning most of the time. Holstein explained, I'd gotten a lot of advice from people who told me that when you're done watching film from an offensive perspective, go to a defensive guy and watch it with him. Those guys are going to be able to teach you more about defenses than anybody. Holstein battled a hamstring injury throughout the spring practices, but by the time fall came around, he was a brand new player as he torched the first team defense with the second team offense. Bell and Narduzzi would give him an opportunity with the ones and he took over from there. The new look offense had floundered against Pitt's defense in every spring scrimmage, Bell said, but with Holstein at the helm for the second scrimmage of the fall, his unit was dominant. In the second half against Cincinnati, he went 13 of 18 for 211 yards and three touchdowns. In the fourth quarter against West Virginia, he led back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives in the fourth quarter, completing five of his six passes for 100 yards and rushing for 63 more. Holstein currently has thrown for 1,808 yards, 17 touchdowns and five interceptions while rushing for 286 yards and three touchdowns on the ground. Although Reed is only 5'6", he has been a tough SOB all season long. He ran for 250 yards and a win over nationally renowned St. Thomas Aquinas as a senior at Miramar High School and won the MVP in the Dade Broward All-Star Game, running for more than 200 yards. Locals compared him to Dalvin Cook, yet due to his size, he went overlooked. Bell offered him while he was coaching D2, and he committed to Western Carolina when Bell ended up there. Reed has impressed so far this season, rushing for 541 yards and three touchdowns on the ground, averaging 6.1 yards per carry, while also having 341 receiving yards and four touchdowns. Last week, they took on Syracuse in a major ACC matchup, with the Orange sitting at 5-1. While Pitt's offense only finished with 217 total yards, it was their defense that shined as they picked off Syracuse quarterback Kyle McCord five times, turning three of those for pick sixes in a 41-13 blowout win. Pitt is currently averaging 40.9 points per game and only allowing 22 points per game. While their offense has been fantastic, their defense is hitting its groove at the right time, making the Panthers a very scary team who are off to their best start since starting 10-0 in 1981. They are averaging over 100 more rushing yards per game and almost 20 more points per game compared to last year. They have a huge matchup against number 22 SMU on the road this weekend, who is also undefeated in ACC play. After that, they host Virginia and number 9 Clemson before traveling on the road to close out the season against Louisville and Boston College. The turnaround Pat and Arduzzi and Pitt have put together this season is truly amazing, and they could find themselves in the ACC title game, and may even the college football playoffs if they continue to play this way down the stretch. 
What do you think? Who wins the ACC this year? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.